I loved. There we go. Okay, so the point that he made here that I responded to, also Dracoris donated uh, $2. Thank you very much for that. And that was Cirrus is officially banned from audio controls. <laughs> I need a producer. <laughs> they militant atheists. Uh, you guys know. Okay, so again, Hitchin, fir first point, Hitchens did not use the term militant atheist. Not to my knowledge. In fact, actually, militant atheism is a derogatory term. Now, new atheists is something that they used, which I'm still not okay with because... There are always new atheists. They're just people who fucking deconvert. So, now, it's... it First point... Okay, and uh, Crystal Emission says, does it matter if he did? Hitchens can be wrong. So Okay, so the reason it matters, the reason it matters if he said it is because we're beginning this live segment, or we're beginning a six-minute video, where the first point made is that I used to follow Hitchens... I would be, as Hitchens called it, a militant atheist. I had many of the books in my library. My library looked very different than it did today. But if Hitchens did not say that, we either have somebody who's misremembering or spouting an untruth. He's also not named any of the books that he has read. We're st I'm starting to see issues. They're nitpicky issues, but they are still issues... Let's continue. No, I love to read. And so back then, my library looked very different. I still have a few of those books today. Um, and But which books? Could you name, like, two? Because I, I could just say, yeah, no, I've, I have a few books from uh, these people as well. Um, I have uh, The God Delusion by uh, Richard Dawkins, even though I think the book is kind of garbage. Um, I have... Um, God is Not Great uh, by Christopher Hitchens. That's another one that I have. Um, what is another one? I have God, the Most Unpleasant Character in All of Fiction. That is another book that I have and I have read. Uh, I have Richard Carrier's On the Historicity of Jesus as well, even though that is another book that is kind of garbo. Um, so, no, I have... I, I could name them without even having to reference my library. Like, I can name at least a few of them. And, yeah, I mean, I loved learning... I still love to learn, but more than anything, I loved arguing with Christians um, from what I thought were good and, and reasonable arguments. Of course, I was dead wrong. And I just, I just want to clarify. Because, of course, I was dead wrong. Well, what meaningful arguments did you make? I am I'm very curious because I, I might actually agree with him that some of the arguments he made are bad. Because there are some really, really bad atheist arguments against the existence of God. The argument from a stone is one of them. So, what, what arguments did he make? Let's see if he says any of them. This wasn't in college. We're talking about high school. Yeah, beginning in... So, I got introduced to atheism by a white paper on Karl Marx. He was the guy... Marx? Wait. Wait a minute. No, and for uh, fourth dimensional Jake, I do know what you mean by the 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 term to atheist of like what type of people they were. I just still do not like the term terribly much. Um, but a white paper. Guy who's I got introduced to atheism by a white paper on Karl Marx. He okay, on was Marx. the guy who said religion is the opiate of the people. This is going to be like people who don't understand Nietzsche when they read, right? Right? This is going to be like that? Let's see. Hold up. Hold up. <laughs> The quote, religion is the opiate of the masses, is the opium of the people. It is one of the most paraphrased statements from Karl Marx. So your your white paper, that's a quote straight from Marx. The original German said, die religion, ist hast, opium del vox. 
I'm mispronouncing that horribly. Um, so, let us see. What is the full quotation? Let's see if this has anything to do with atheism. Let us see. Yeah, I probably did mispronounce it horribly. Okay, so, the full quote is, The foundation of irreligious criticism is, Man makes religion. Actually, not here, we're going we're gonna to do this a really easy way. We're going to do this easy way. Hi, guys. It's me. How you doing? The foundation of irreligious criticism is, Man makes religion. Religion does not make man. Religion is, indeed, the self-conscious and self-esteem of man, who has either not yet won through himself or has already lost himself again. But man is no abstract being, squatting in, uh, squatting outside the world. Man is the world of man, state, and society. The state and the society produce religion, which is an inverted consciousness of the world, because they are an inverted world. Religion is the general theory of this world. It's and encyclopedic compendium, its logic in popular form, its spiritual point de honor, its enthusiasm, its moral sanction, its solemn com uh, compliment, its universal basis of consolation and justification. It is the fantastic realization of the human essence since the human essence has not acquired any true reality. The struggle against religion is, therefore, indirectly the struggle against that world whose spiritual aroma is religion. Religious suffering is, at one and the same time, the expression of real suffering and a protest against real suffering. Religion is the sigh of the oppressed creature, the heart of the heartless world, and the soul of the soulless conditions. It is the opium of the people. The abolition of religious... The abolition of religion as the illusory happiness of the people is the demand for their real happiness. To call on them to give up their illusions about their condition is to call them a condition that requires illusions. The criticism of religion is therefore in embryo the criticism of that veil of tears, which religion is the halo. This is from an introduction to a contribution to the critique of Hegel's philosophy of right, a series of collected works, including those by Karl Marx. Now... All right, so let's make some meaningful distinctions here. What is being talked about? Religion as an organization is being talked about in this quote. It is very, very clear because Marx specifically is saying that religion is something that man makes and then is made by the state and then is given back down to man in order to give them an illusory happiness, in order to give them a reason for being, as opposed to a real reason for being. It gives them a substitute reason for being. But a distinction needs to be made here. He is talking about religiosity. He is not talking about atheism. Atheism has not been brought up at all in this entire quote. And this is the whole quote. This is not just the part <laughs> that is taken with the religion as the opening to the masses part, the part that is quoted over and over again. There is nothing in this at all about atheism, only about irreligiosity. And for those who don't know, there is a very functional difference between the two. I'm, I'm hoping everybody in the chat knows the difference between uh, uh, religion and theism. If you don't know the difference between... Actually, no, here. If you know the difference between religion and theism, press H. But if you don't, press G. And we'll use that to determine whether or not I'm actually going to go into this. H, H, H. Mono says G. If there's, like, more than three Gs... Then I'll go ahead and explain the difference for, for people who don't know. Because it is, there is an important distinction. Also, Dracoris Felving for the $2 says I'm banned from audio controls. Okay. There's, there's enough Gs. There's enough Gs. I'll do it. All right. So the meaningful distinction between the two, religion has to deal with a, a set of rules. Religion is a set of rules or dogma or doctrine or anything like that. Um, lifestyle can fall into religion. Um, theism, though, theism is different. Theism deals with God belief. As an example, 
Um, a Levian Satanist is an atheist, but they also have a religion. A Buddhist can be an atheist, but also have a religion. A Christian can be a Christian, but have no religion. Any theist can be a theist with no religion. They merely have to believe in the God. That is all. If a theist believes in a god or gods, that is one category that has to do with their belief. But their practices, their axioms, things like that, those all will fall under the category of religion. Yes, Chris Books, I recognize that Buddhism has no god. I said a Buddhist can be an atheist. There are theistic Buddhists, though. But there are also atheistic Buddhists. So an atheist is in the category of belief, whereas axioms and practices, those are going to be in the category of religion. You can believe in a god, you can believe a god exists, but not have a religion. An example of this, a very obvious one, would be a misotheist. A misotheist believes gods exist, or believes a god exists, but hates them, refuses to practice their tenets, absolutely despises them. This is a theist who is very irreligious. Nightmarishly so. So, these are two very distinct categories, and there is meaning in their distinction. Uh, Dracora says, if I follow Loki, regardless of how many gods I think exist, that would be theism, but not religion. Correct. Simply following Loki does not suddenly mean that you have a religion. But depending on what you do in practice... You may have a religion. It depends. Again, there are there are pagans and there are polytheists. There's a reason. Like, paganism deals with religiosity, whereas polytheism just deals with belief. Many polytheists are pagans. Not necessarily, though. Yeah, Callan says pagan and polytheist here. Polytheist deals with the belief, belief in many gods. Pagan deals with the religiosity, the religion of paganism. Well, paganism is an umbrella term that has many different types and styles of religion in it, but so does Christianity. So, that said, there is that little bit of information distinction. That information is important because people get this wrong all the time. And it's infuriating when they do, because these are very easy and obvious categories. They're very easy to, to separate. They're very easy to have distinctions between. Now, continuing on. Uh, and that, that got my head spinning. It introduced me to a world of atheism. And it's funny, I was just remembering this. Uh, speak of romance, I took a girl out on a date to UCLA to hear atheists talk about morality. That, to me, was a good night. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Where's, where's the joke? Where? I I don't get it. Is this like when I'm watching Nicholas Fuentes and I'm sitting there going, why is the audience laughing? Is this the same thing? I don't think so. I recognize that there is an in-joke uh, with a lot of uh, religious philosophers that say that, aha, atheists can't talk about morality because God is the foundation of morality. Okay. But no, let's let's see. Let's see if they explain the joke, even though explaining the joke makes it much less funny. Uh, That's terrible. <laughs> that is that is amazing to me. You know, I mentioned that it was high school, not college, because where do you find what? high schoolers today Why does that really matter? giving themselves over to that kind of quote unquote intellectual Quote unquote intellectual. Mm. Yes. Mm. I'm I'm feeling this man's brain. I'm trying to find wrinkles, but I can't. There's nothing there. We can skip pebbles across his skull. There's nothing here. Okay. 
uh, study. What was the attraction? That's what I'm trying to figure yeah. out. That's a good question. I've been thinking about this more lately. I think if you asked me back then, my incentive was reason and logic. Mm. But as I look back on what, um, what was happening in my heart, as I have a better understanding of who I was as a person back then. Wait, 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 hold on. Hold up. Yes, it is Ray Comfort. Hold on a second. Let me get this straight. Buddy old friend, my pal, person who's I am not actually speaking to, but I have to do this for theater um, because this is really one of the only ways I can justify me doing this job. Um, so, a question, really important question. You make the point earlier that atheism is somehow anti-intellectual because theism must be intellectual. You, you did the whole air quotes intellectualism thing, or at least your friend did. But your reasoning is what was going on in your heart. So emotional. Okay. I'm, I'm not saying that emotional arguments cannot also be intellectual. That's not what I'm saying at all. But I am saying that you're arguing that you felt a certain way as opposed to you logically came to a certain conclusion. I think my incentive was to try to dumb down and rationalize what we would call sin. So I don't wanna to get too deep into it, but you guys know I, I have a, a interesting childhood. My mom was a drug addict. I had abusive parents and there was- <sighs> Who is this guy? Oscar Navarro. Hold up. Let's take a look here. Let's do some Let's do some study. Oscar Navarro. Christian. <laughs> okay, okay, so get this. Get this. Oscar Navarro. Oscar Navarro is the vice president of ministry advancement for living waters he is a gifted expository preacher whose cultural commentary is enlightening and concise he is a board member of safe harbor international relief spirit christian academy and elephant cooperation he is a connoisseur of books music movies and his wife and three kids wait um, so hold up. Do you have, are you important enough to have a Wikipedia? No, you're not. So I can't do that much research on you. When did you do this? This is sounding like you're just going, yeah, I had a phase in high school and um, I didn't. And that's why atheism am stupid. That's, that's what I get from this. I just realized how thin my hair is. I didn't just realize that. I've known my hair is thin. It comes with getting older. So. <laughs> so you're telling me that your guy, who's a vice president in a subcategory of your organization, uh, is giving his testimony. And I'm supposed to take it seriously. But as soon as I look up your guy, the way this looks. I have way a this looks. Lot. Subject, mm. but the way this looks this looks like we've got a dude who's just here for like an interview and everybody's just discovering these things about him and it's so neat that's the way this is framed but then when they're telling their stories it's like no no this isn't a new guy this this guy works for us that's uh that's frustrating that's agitating is to try to dumb down and rationalize what we would call sin. So I don't want to get too deep into it, but you guys know I, I have a, a interesting childhood. My mom was a drug addict. I had abusive parents. And there was something about atheism to me that said, uh, you, don't have to be, you don't have to be overly depressed over these things. It's not so much they did something wrong to you. They're simply just animals. And animals... How does atheism say that? Wait, wait, how does atheism say that 
They didn't do anything wrong to you. They're just animals. Where? <sighs> Where is that said? Where is that noted? This... I don't have anything to hit myself in the head with. Man, that's really depressing. <laughs> okay, sure. <laughs> Why not? Don't worry. I believe you, Wink. Eat their young in the wild all the time. Wow. So atheism was almost a way for me to rationalize the wrong that had happened, the wrong that I did and the wrong that I saw in other people. All right, so um, let's do a thing here. Let's, do, let's, let's have some fun. So... <sighs> We have an argument here that can be easily considered a projection. And here is why. We have somebody who's saying, Atheism gave me a reason to rationalize what my parents were doing. They were just animals. All right, let's take that, that argument. This is the argument. We're going to set it here. We're going to construct a new argument. Original sin gave me a reason to understand why my parents were acting horribly. After all, we're all just sinners. Let me hold that argument in this hand. Hold that one in this hand. This is the same fucking argument. All you did was just replace original sin doctrine with they just animals. That's, that's all you did. Is, is this what we're supposed to take seriously? Like, I know that Ray Comfort isn't somebody to take seriously, generally speaking, but what? Also, uh, Brian Stevens says, uh, title, man who was never an atheist leaves atheism. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm getting here. That's what it sounds like. Okay, let's just. Let's just continue. Um, Almost like a coping mechanism, sort of. Like a coping. The problem is, is that that argument... Like a coping mechanism? Please tell me what part of atheism helps you cope. Please. What? What part of atheism helps you cope? There's, there's nothing in it because it's devoid of substance. Atheism is a belief claim... One belief claim. Do you believe in a god? No. That's it. Well, do you believe gods don't exist, if we're philosophically speaking? That's it. That's all it is. So why? How does that, that one claim that is devoid of any substance, elsewise, how does that comfort you? Amen fall short because ultimately what it's saying is nothing nothing is wrong like it's just it is what it is you know it's not saying that atheism doesn't say anything you know we are just bubbling goo and sometimes we pop on each other um what? and of course the goodness of the gospel is that no 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 it's things have gone terribly wrong you can make that from atheism if you need to that's easy but again, atheism itself doesn't say any of that. There's no doctrine, dogma. There's not even a fucking book to look at to tell you how to be an atheist. It's very simple. Don't believe in a god. Am atheist. Do believe in a god. Am theist. Don't know? The suspen suspension of, of judgment? Am agnostic. That's, that's easy. That's all it is. That, that's, that's it. We are in sin. Um, when somebody sins against you, it's okay to say that is wrong. Right. That is not how things are supposed to be. Did atheism give you a sense of identity? Oh, yeah. It's, uh, it's funny because atheism is anti-established religion, but... Um,
That's a spicy take. Okay, so. Oh, I got hot sauce on my fingers. <sighs> so, um, your, your point is that atheism is anti-established religion. Didn't we make a distinction earlier that atheism is not that? Atheism is about the belief in God or gods. Religion is about practices, axioms, etc. Like it's not, it's not the same thing. Also, I got hot sauce everywhere now. That was a mistake. That was a mistake. God. Anywho. So, when I hear a dumb take like this, and an absolutely profoundly stupid take, my only thought is, did you actually read any book at all? Like one, even even half of one, a pamphlet, a sentence, something. Because that, what you just said, is wrong. Atheism is not anti-established religion. It's not anti-anything. It's one thing. That's it. How many? How much? How much more is this? Much Atheism more acts a sure a lot like religion. Mm -hmm. I mean, you've got the prophets like Hitchens and Dawkins. Mm -hmm. You've got prophets where? Let's do a thing. What is a prophet? Can anybody give me a good definition of a prophet before I'm done Googling it? Prophet. A noun. A person regarded as an inspired teacher or proclaimer of the will of God. Bitch, where? Where? Sure, you could make the, the very loose, loose definition that a prophet uh, is just a teacher. But in that case, I had a science prophet. I had a math prophet. I had a history prophet. This word has now lost meaningful distinction and meaningful use. It is now a, it is now a word that is completely devoid of any practical application. Or we can keep it precise so it has practical application, in which now it categorically can't apply to any of the people who you are trying to talk about. The stupid is strong. It's very strong. You've got the priests like uh, Bill Maher and Jacqueline Glenn. Uh I guess that means that this cup that's from Chick-fil-A... By the way, good news. They stopped supporting all of the, the shitty organizations um, for the time being. I guess I'll stop buying their shit if they do it again. But um, So what you're saying is, by your loose definition, uh, the people who sold me this drink, um, they were priests, right? The people at the Chick-fil-A counter, they were priests. They, they had to be, by your vapid, loose definition that has no actual cogent meaning, the person at Chick-fil-A was a priest. I will be asking him uh, later uh, to explain to me uh, the moral argument for God. Uh, I'll, I mean, they're a priest. This is, this is within their purview now. This is now officially within their purview. Uh, and you've got followers. You've got nonprofits that are making money on it. I mean, it, it sure looks a non lot like a religion. That are making money on it. Right? <laughs> you, you, yes, nonprofit organizations can make money. That's that's how they survive. The, look at the look on his face. Watch, watch it like uh, Bill Maher and Jacqueline Glenn, uh, and you've got followers, you've got nonprofits that are making money on it. I mean, it, it sure looks a lot like... Look at that man's face. That is the face of somebody who's like, that looks really suspicious. Nonprofits making money. 
I've never heard of such a book church. Oh, I'm sorry. I had something caught in my throat. A non-profit organization that is, that is categorically non-profit making money? That's really strange. I've never heard of any of that. That's, hmm. I have no idea. Let's see here. Is... Do, 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 do. Ah! Cool. And... <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Here's some interesting stuff. Here's some interesting information, just so you guys know. Okay. Now, can anyone tell me if Living Waters Ministries is a nonprofit organization? Because it is. Can anyone tell me what the net worth of Ray Comfort is? One million dollars. But Living Waters Ministries is non-profit. Ray Comfort is worth a hundred thousand to a million dollars. But that's the face of somebody that heard that a nonprofit organization can make money. As he makes money utilizing his nonprofit organization. That's the face of a liar. A religion. That are making money on it. <laughs> How did you come out? What happened? Um, honestly, it was just it was God's grace on my life. Uh, so a non-answer. I had I had known the gospel in regards to being able to articulate it. I had heard it before. Um, I had argued against it, and someone had invited me to a baptism, which I did not want to go to. If your arguments are so bad that witnessing a baptism causes you to deconvert, you didn't have a good foundation to begin with. Uh, and I was promised that there was not going to be a gospel presentation, uh, and there was. Um, <laughs> oh, so let me get this straight. Let me get this straight. The reason you converted, the reason you decided that it was it was time for you to be a Christian is because... Because Christians lied to you? Wait. Wait a minute. Honest and trustworthy Christians lied to you, and as a result, you decided to become a Christian too. Probably because after having those honest Christians lie to you about their organization, you realized how easy it was to do people by being a liar for a Christian organization. And now you're working for Living Waters Ministries in a very high position of power. And, uh, <laughs> but nonprofits can't make money. <laughs> Which there should be. Lying for the sake of the gospel. Yeah. No, I don't think this person knew, yeah. to their credit. Um, but uh, it was... When he started talking, it was it was my time. Um, the Lord, uh, the, the Lord stirred something up in me in that moment. It was like I had all. But what? But what was said? Substance, please. All these arguments against him. But in that moment, the Holy Spirit said you and right now. And it was a gospel presentation that I had heard before. But the difference is that I, I heard it with my soul rather wow. than just hearing it. With now, what were your emotions at that time? Was it scary? Was it well, what comforting? What? There was, I'd love to say that it was like, you know, the Apostle Paul that I went right away and started studying and, and uh, became, you know, a, a church planter or something. But honestly, I was confused and somewhat in denial. I didn't tell anybody that night that something had happened. I didn't tell anybody until a year later. Wow. I, Okay, so you became a closeted Christian for some strange reason, even though there's really no benefit to being a closeted Christian, especially here in the United States. 
but again, can you can you tell me what was said? Like you didn't say you said you had all the arguments. She didn't say what those arguments were. Something was said that stirred me, but she didn't say what was said that stirred you. What can can you give me something, something to work with, anything? I would really like that. Uh, I so it wasn't real quick. It wasn't something. It wasn't like you responded to a call to repent outwardly. It was just in your heart. It was well. He he said, you know, if if you want me to pray for you, look at me. And the Oscar before that moment would have been like, yeah, right. I'm not looking yeah. at you. I don't need you to pray for me. No, thank <laughs> you. But um, I, I looked at him and he prayed, but I didn't approach him afterwards. Like I said, I didn't tell anybody. Yeah. The next year of my life, um, I, I tried to spend it doing the same things that I was doing before. Mm-hmm. Um, and I wouldn't call it a depression, but I, maybe it was a spiritual depression. Mm-hmm. Again, I didn't have words for it back then. Today, mm-hmm. looking back, what was happening, I was being convicted. Wow. You were being convicted. Okay. Let's see. Having been declared guilty of a criminal offense by the verdict of a jury or the decision of a judge. Um, I'm not sure if that's the right word for it. The things of the world that brought me happiness were no longer bringing me happiness. And God was calling me towards something else. Was and that it because me... of a sense of guilt that came with them? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I, would, I would go about my sin-ridden life doing this. But you, but what were you doing? Like, what were you doing? What did you do? What did you say? What was the arguments? What, what was said at the thing? You're saying words, but there's nothing here. What was said? What things were you doing? What sinful things were you participating in that we are supposed to know about? These are important details, and you are just ignoring them. The same things I had done before, but there was... There was a weightiness to them now. There was this sense of I'm, I'm running from something. A gulp. Uh, a mm-hmm. Guilt and shame, absolutely. You, you weren't reading the Bible at this time. You weren't going to church. You no, were... not at all. I stopped <laughs> my, uh, I, I, I pulled back on my arguments, um, on my like but approaching what were Christians they? because I was wrestling with something. Wow. Um, but it was a year later. I finally decided that I needed to figure out what happened, and I called the only person I knew that was a Christian. I asked them what time their church but, met and where, and it happened to be, it was a Thursday morning that I called them, and they happened to meet Thursday night. Wow. Okay, so what are the bets that this guy is actually going to tell us what happened when he went to that church in the last 50 seconds of this video? A little to my knowledge, he got off the phone and tells a friend of his, my atheist friend's coming, and I think he's going to picket our church. <laughs> but I was, sincere, I, was going, I was going just to figure it out. Yeah. You know? At the end of the day, what saves people is, is God. Mm. And uh, for me, it wasn't the right argument. It was the gospel and the Holy Spirit, and, and there were probably some people praying for me as well. Wow. So nothing. Did... So nothing. So there is nothing here. There is nothing actually of substance here for me to do. There's nothing here. The... I had all the arguments. Nobody used a counter argument. I just, the gospel. Did you read anything? No. Including the gospel? No. Okay. You were living a sinful life. Yes. What were you doing? No. This... There's nothing there.